So let's talk about OCT angiography uh, on the spectralis. Uh, the OCTA module uh, is part of the multimodal platform. Uh, and of course you can correlate that with the other imaging modes uh, that are available uh, within the platform. And hopefully uh, taking a holistic approach uh, will give you uh, much more confidence in your assessment of each eye. Now it's important to understand that this is a three-dimensional data set. So it's not like an FA, which is a two-dimensional uh, imaging mode. Um, and there are some key technical components that are necessary in order to obtain, uh, let's say, reliable and reproducible OCT angiography information. You need the resolution within your OCTA in order to be able to uh, monitor uh, correctly uh, the amount of flow through the capillaries. So we have resolution of 5.7 microns by 3.9 microns axially uh, in order to do that. And you also need to be able to hold position on that capillary. So we have true track, live eye tracking uh, to allow us to move with the eye and stay on that capillary. And thirdly, we need to measure the flow of the red blood cells through the capillary and bearing in mind that the flow is inconsistent. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow uh, and it varies throughout the day. So sampling becomes very important. So we use our art function, the art of OCT or automatic real-time meaning, uh, averaging if you like, in order to make sufficient samples of that flow through the capillary so that we have a reliable reading uh, at the end. Um, and just to show you that we're measuring physiology of the body, it's not OCT as we know it, and it's not FA either, it's physiology. Um, let me show you an example how that looks. So just to illustrate what we try to measure with OCTA, here's a patient that's been examined uh, twice uh, within the space of 10 minutes. So the baseline exam is here and then the follow-up exam is here. And if I flicker between the baseline and the follow-up exam, you can see that there are differences in the OCTA image. And that tells us that we're actually measuring physiology. Uh, the body is constantly changing throughout the day. And so when you sample at one particular moment, you might get a different pattern of OCT angiography compared to another. And both are normal, but they're different. Um, so just to make the point, when we're measuring OCT angiography, we're measuring physiology of the body. It's not OCT and it's not FA. Um, so it's quite challenging. And you do need the special components we call spectralis DNA, if you like, um, true track, live eye tracking, and the art of OCT, sufficient sampling or averaging of that flow signal going through that capillary. And you need the resolution to be able to look on that capillary properly to make your assessment. So the most common clinical applications today for OCT angiography are in AMD and diabetic retinopathy. So I'd like to show you a couple of cases so you can see uh, how the OCTA viewing window looks and all of the functions that we have available. We use a multimodal approach uh, in everything that we do uh, and it's no different. Um, so if we're looking at a patient with a retina condition like AMD, uh, we start uh, from the position of familiarity if you like. And so you would be used to looking at a uh, structural B-scan and here you can see uh, in our B-scan that there is a disruption to the retina. You can see subretinal fluid here and you can see some type of uh, lesion, uh, but maybe at this point you don't know what type of lesion it is. Now if you're not going to do an FA, uh, you have no um, information about leakage, uh, about changes to the blood retinal barrier. And so you might consider to use confocal multicolor because in your confocal multicolor image, you're going to be able to see evidence of fluid and active leakage. So you would use OCTA in combination with your confocal multicolor. So let's look at our OCT angiography. 
So you can see in the very first viewing window, this is really a summary of the information. You have your infrared uh, fundus image here. You have uh, your structural B scan with the overlay of the OCTA flow. And here you have a breakdown of your superficial vascular complex, deep vascular complex, and the avascular complex. And of course your eye is drawn to the avascular complex because there's some flow there that shouldn't be there. Now this is an interactive window and you can move around all of those at the same time and you can actually survey what's going on here. So if we have a look here, um, we can magnify also this window and you might actually see some flow here which is possibly underneath the RPE. So maybe a type one MNV. But also, if we move over here, we can see that there's flow which is much further up in the retina and looks to be like a type 2 MNV. And so even at a first glance, you can probably make some assessment quickly that you may have type 1 and type 2 conditions or lesions within the same image. Let's look further in more detail. So what you have here is uh, an opportunity to look at all of the different vascular plexus. You have an on-fast OCT image here. You have on-fast OCT angiography image, and you have horizontal and vertical structural B-scan. And very interestingly, you might see here that you've got some dark areas, um, and this highlights a key point that you need to consider with OCT angiography, and that is segmentation. So the question here is, is that actually capillary dropout or is it just a bad segmentation? And if you look down here at our B-scan, structural B-scan, you can see how the segmentation is actually uh, corrupted uh, and it's almost joined up here between the outer and, uh, and, and the inner margins of that segmentation and that's causing these black areas here. So the first thing that you have to consider when you're looking on OCTA is, is my segmentation good and have I got a nice consistent slab in order to be able to evaluate correctly what I'm seeing in my OCT angiography. So um, you have the possibility to modify your segmentation here and what we can do is we can take a, a section from the inner limiting membrane to Brooks membrane and we can create a slab. Let's say for AMD, I would choose a slab of maybe 60 microns because that's sufficient to capture most of the lesion that you want to look on. And so we set a slab to 60 and now you see that this slab here is converted and it's, and it's following the profile of the inner limiting membrane and it's consistently 60 microns. And this is gonna give us a much more reproducible way of evaluating our OCT angiography. And what I can do is I can drag that slab down through the various different plexus and you can see how it morphs, it changes shape and starts to conform more to the RPE Brooks membrane as you go down. So this is going to give you a much more consistent evaluation of each plexus as you go down through the retina. So it's a very important technical point that you need to uh, make sure that you're taking care of when you're looking on your OCT angiography. So in the viewing window here is very nice because we can walk through three-dimensionally if you like down through the different plexus of the retina right the way through to the choroid. Um, so the default setting here is a superficial vascular complex uh, and there are two plexus within that complex so you have the nerve fiber layer uh, vascular plexus and the superficial vascular plexus and moving down through the retina we have the deep vascular complex which also has two plexus uh, the intermediate capillary plexus and the deep capillary plexus. And this may become important when we look at uh, diabetic patients because early diabetic changes occur in the deep vascular complex and maybe we want to see what happens between those two plexus. And I'll show you a case of that in a minute. 
Um, you also can move further down into the avascular complex here and of course we can see that we've got some flow that shouldn't be there and that's what we want to evaluate. Uh, and finally moving to the chorea capillaris and then to the choroid. Now if you look at the full retina, you have everything in there so you can actually see that this lesion seems to be much more visible when you consider the retina. But if you then use the full extent from the vitreous right the way through to the choroid, that would then include information that's coming at the level of the choroid. And so you see that that is different. And now you see this other lesion which may be below the retina. So you have an opportunity to review right the way through to the choroid or then superficial vascular complex with the plexus and deep vascular complex with the plexus to the avascular complex. So now we're going to walk around uh, the retina uh, three-dimensionally uh, and think like a radiologist rather than ophthalmologist. Um, I've selected my AMD 60 micron slab uh, and I can walk down through the retina into the vascular complex and I start to see where this initial lesion is and I can walk around this lesion and look to see where the flow is. You can magnify your view here uh, of your structural B-scan with the flow overlay and the flow is in yellow and you can remove the flow or put the flow back in. So if you interact and, and just adjust between the structural B-scan and the flow, you can see where that flow is located. Um, and if we come back out again, you can see that probably that flow is above the level of the RPE and probably is a type 2 um, MNV lesion. However, if we move further down with our slab, we start to see this second area uh, of flow, um, which if you look more closely and walk around, you may consider that possibly this is a type one and it may be occurring below the level of the RPE, so an occult lesion. Um, so we look like we may have two types of lesion within the eye, a type one and a type two. Um, so in case you're really not sure, it's a very good idea to look three-dimensionally around the area um, to make your assessment. Finally, let's look at a diabetic uh, retinopathy patient um, and see what we can see. Um, you can see in the summary window here, uh, we have superficial vascular complex and we have deep vascular complex and the avascular complex and of course we're not expecting anything there because this is a diabetic patient but you can see immediately within the deep vascular complex that we have some microaneurysms uh, flagging up here uh, and even right up to the surface to the superficial level. So here we're interested in the deep vascular complex and we want to look at uh, the foveolar vascular zone whether that changes in terms of shape and also the configuration of the capillaries uh, in that area. Um, so we can look at the combined intermediate capillary plexus and deep capillary plexus um, and I can magnify that image there. We can get rid of our crosshairs and you can see the configuration of the capillaries uh, of the combined complex but we can separate the plexus. So here's the intermediate capillary plexus and you can see that there are much more separated uh, spaces between the capillaries. The foveolar vascular zone is looking like this and so we would be able to monitor very nicely whether there are changes to the foveolar vascular zone which might be indicative of uh, early diabetic changes. Uh, also you can move to the deep capillary plexus and there you see we have a much more dense pattern or mosaic of capillary structures uh, compared to the intermediate. So at the moment you can flick between those separate plexus to evaluate what is happening uh, rather than the combined um, vascular complex. And so it may be important in the future uh, to identify those separate plexus 
Maybe there are changes in one compared to the other. Um, we're not sure yet, but it would be very useful to be able to switch between those two plexus to know what's going on. So always remember, OCTA is really measuring physiology. Uh, we're trying to capture uh, a consistently inconsistent moving entity, uh, these red blood cells going through capillaries. And so this is quite challenging technically. Uh, and so we like to think we have spectralis uh, DNA and you need these key components uh, to make good OCTA imaging. So first of all, you need the resolution to be able to image those capillaries. Uh, secondly, you need true track live eye tracking to be able to stay on that capillary. And then you need to be able to do sufficient sampling because of the inconsistent flow. And finally, if you think about it, you need reproducible results because you want to be tracking follow-up and looking for change over time. So all of these components combined together are necessary uh, if you're going to be doing good OCTA imaging.